What is calculus? Let's take a look at the big picture. Calculus connects two functions through the way that they change. There's a couple types of change that we will look at in connecting these through calculus. One would be the rate of change, which is how fast a function is changing. And the other would be the amount of change, which of course is how much it's changing. So a few examples. Fuel efficiency is measured as a rate of change, miles per gallon. Anytime you see the word per, you want to think about rate of change. The amount of change is the number of miles traveled when we use some number of gallons G. Dollars per hour, which is our pay rate, that's a rate of change. And the amount of change is the number of dollars that we earn working for H hours. Rate of change might be velocity measured in meters per second. And the amount of change is the distance that's moved in some period of time, T seconds. We can even look at something like topographic change, which would be the ascent or descent in altitude as you ride some number of feet along a bike trail. So the steepness of the trail is the rate of change, and what we're changing there is the altitude. The amount of change is going to be the altitude up or down. Mathematically, the functions are connected this way. First of all, we can figure out how fast something is changing if we know how much it's changing. The rate of change of that quantity is just how much the output changes given a certain amount of change in the input. For example, we know that if we're getting 30 miles to the gallon in a car, that might be calculated by noting that the output of the car, the miles traveled, has changed by 300 miles and the input, the number of gallons of gas used, has changed by 10. This is nothing more than the slope, and the slope is going to be the important thing that we're going to look at when we study differential calculus. We can also go the other way and figure out how much something is changing by knowing how fast it's changing, and we're simply going to take that rate of change equation and rearrange it so that the change in the output can be calculated by the rate of change times how much the input is changing. Again, we can figure that our car is going to go 300 miles if we have a rate of change of 30 miles per gallon and we're using an input of 10 gallons. Let's look at an example involving a paycheck. On the left, you'll see a graph that shows the rate of pay in dollars per hour for a job over a period of 48 hours. The rate of change varies from day to day so for each eight hour period, we have a different dollar per hour rate. On the right, we see a graph of the amount of the paycheck as that paycheck grows over the period of time that you're working. So during your first eight hours on the job, your pay rate, which is the rate of change of your paycheck, was $5 per hour, which you can see in the left graph. So suppose you work 6.4 hours, your paycheck changes in amount by $5 per hour times 6.4 hours. And that gives you $32. Now if you look on the graph on the right, you'll see that the slope at 6.4 hours is $32 earned divided by 6.4 hours, which gives you $5 per hour. Now look at the shaded area on the rate graph on the left. You notice that $5 per hour is the height of that area and 6.4 hours is the width. So this means that the area is $5 per hour times 6.4 hours equals $32. This is the amount of change of the paycheck. And so we have this relationship now between these two graphs where the area on the left gives us the amount on the right and the slope on the right gives us the height on the left. So this means that if we graph how fast a quantity is changing, we can find out how much it changes by measuring the area under the rate graph. So in this case, how fast it's changing is $5 per hour, and how much it changed is the area, which is $32. Also, if we graph how much of the quantity we have at any particular time, we can find out how fast it's changing by measuring the slope of the amount graph. 
So here we have how much, $32, and we divide that by the 6.4 hours and we get $5 per hour, which is how fast. Now watch as the graph is animated. On the left, you'll see that as time goes on, the amount of money that you make is going to be equal to the rate of pay, which is the dollars per hour, times the amount of time that you're working. And so the area underneath the graph on the left is going to equal the amount of your paycheck. On the right, you'll see that the amount of the paycheck will track that area, and the slope of the graph is equal to the rate of pay, $5 per hour, $10 per hour, and so forth. So notice that for each segment of eight hours of work time, the slope on the right corresponds to the pay rate on the left. Notice especially at this point between 16 and 24 hours that apparently we called in sick and so we earned zero dollars per hour and that corresponds to a zero slope. Okay, but we figured all of this out with just simple algebra, so why do we need calculus? Well, the example that we just explored used all straight line segments. We had constant values for the pay rates within each eight hour period. This corresponded to linear slopes on the pay amount chart. In practice, the functions we work with are usually curves. So while the ideas we just discovered will still apply, we'll have to develop new tools to be able to work with curved functions. For example, how do we find the slope, the rate of change, of a curve? And how do we calculate the area under a curved graph? First, let's consider the slope of a curve. If we change the input a little bit, which we'll call delta x, how much does the output change, which is what we'll call delta y? The answer is that it depends on where we are on the curve. On the sloping side of the curve, we get much more change delta y1 with a given delta x than the change delta y2 that we get at the top of the curve with the same input delta x. So the slope of a curve can be thought of as a function. The slope depends on the value of x where we measure it. But even with a very small input delta x, the graph in that area is still a curve. However, the smaller we make delta x, the more this piece of the curve looks like a line segment. Watch as we zoom in on the curved tip of the graph. The closer we get, the flatter the tip looks. We calculate the slope of this almost a line segment using two points on the graph that are delta x units apart. By moving the two points closer and closer together, thereby making delta x smaller and smaller, this line's slope matches the curve's slope at a point better and better. The slope of a function is called the function's derivative. Differential calculus is concerned with the methods of finding the derivative of a function. To find the area under a curved graph, we can break up the area into narrow rectangles of width delta x and add their areas together. The height of any rectangle is the same as the height or the value of the function there. We make delta x smaller and smaller, which makes the sum of the rectangle areas closer and closer to the actual area of that region. This summation of the areas is called integration, 
and the area found this way is called the function's integral. Integral calculus is concerned with finding the integrals of functions. So, what is calculus? It's a way to relate two aspects of a function, its value or amount, and its rate of change, or its slope. We do this by looking at the slope of the value to get the rate of change, or the area under the rate of change curve to get the value. This is calculus.